Who knows what evil lurks in the hearts of men? The shadow knows. <laughs> Once again, we bring you the thrilling adventures of The Shadow, the hard and relentless fight of one man against the forces of evil. These dramatizations are designed to demonstrate forcibly to old and young alike that crime does not pay. The shadow who aids the forces of law and order is in reality Lamont Cranston, wealthy young man about town. Years ago in the Orient, Cranston learnt a strange and mysterious secret. The hypnotic power to cloud men's minds so they cannot see him. Cranston's friend and companion, the lovely Margot Lane, is the only person who knows to whom the voice of the invisible shadow belongs. Today's drama, Spotlight on the Duchess. The scene is set in a low-class saloon, filled with the wispy haze of cigarette smoke. On a high stool leaning against the counter is a blousy, peroxided blonde, her heavily lined face streaked with thickly caked makeup. What is a drunken man like? Or like a drowned man? A fool? A madman? A drink too many makes him a fool. Another maddens him. And the last one drowns him. Give me another drink, barman. I'm coming up for the last time. <laughs> Give us some more of that Shakespeare, Millie. <laughs> Wait till I oil the old vocal cord. <laughs> All right, Millie Bernhardt. You've played your last scene. It's the police. Come along with me, Millie. What for? For the murders of Mary Kennedy, Hagen Bales, and Peggy Bell. What? You couldn't stand to see them steal the spotlight from you, could you, Millie? Even if it was from a lot of tramps in the cheap saloon. Nobody steals the spotlight from me. Not even you, officer. I drink. Farewell. <laughs> What happened? It's Millie. She's dead. Oh. She poisoned herself, just as she poisoned the others. But she did it. She kept the spotlight until the very end. Did you like the play, Lamont? Well, you know me, John, I'm usually a fan for any murder play. And what did you think of it, Margot? Shall I be candid? Oh, please do. Well, even though you are the author and we are friends, John, I'm afraid it's not one of your most brilliant efforts. You thought it was awful, both of you? Well, not exactly. No doubt, John, it has your usual grand dialogue. But I just can't picture anyone killing people just because they steal the spotlight. A broken-down old actress was citing to bar loungers and poisoning anyone who tries to get more attention than she does. Crimes have been committed for far less important reasons than that. Yes, that's true. I know of a woman who killed her husband just because he sat around the house cracking his knuckles all day. Oh, that I can understand. It's got to be a success. I, I've sunk everything I own in this play. Oh, you backed it, too. It's the one show of my career, Lamont. If it fails, well, my future isn't going to be very bright. Oh, old boy, the play just isn't true, is it? Well, it's not believable. But it is, Lamont. Those characters I've created are real. Oh, now, look, John, I've been mixed up with murder and crimes and mystery for years. I know what's real when I see it. And, well, hang it all. The, uh, that play of yours just doesn't hold together. But those characters are people I know. People I've been watching and studying for months. You mean there is actually a woman like that old actress? And one like the little flirt? And a man like that bar lounger? And, and a woman like that ex-circus performer? Exactly, Margot. And the barman is a real-life character, too. They all have counterparts. Uh, that plot you've cooked up reflects real life. If anything as far-fetched as that could really happen, John, I swear I'll eat my hat on the busiest street in town at high noon. That's a bet. All right, that settles it. What? 
Tomorrow, I'm introducing you to the real-life setting and characters I use for my play. Well, how do you like it? Well, it looks like the first deck curtain on the lower deck. <laughs> wait, wait till you meet the barman. Hello there, Mike. Well, if it isn't Mr. Drake again. Meet a couple of friends of mine, Mike. Uh, Miss Lane, Mr. Cranston. Reckon you're welcome if you're friends of Mr. Drake. Uh, heard you got a show on that open last night. Yes, yes, you'll have to come around and see it, Mike. I'll, I'll give you a couple of tickets. Uh, the Duchess been in yet tonight? Ah, oh, she'll be around, Mr. Drake. You know, there isn't a tramp in the neighborhood who doesn't get in at least once a day, unless they've got both their legs cut off. Then I reckon they'll get someone to carry them in. Uh, what do you have? Oh, I don't mind telling you, my liquor will tear a hole in your shirt. Three beers, Mike. Three beers it is, Mr. Drake. Where on earth did these poor souls come from? Well, they've usually hit rock bottom when they find this neighborhood, Margot. Ah, that's right, Mr. Drake. Poor devils. I feel sorry for most of them. Now do you believe my characters are real? Characters? Perhaps, John. Ooh, that plot. I always say you don't know how much suffering there is in the world until you get behind a bar. You see, I'm sort of a philosopher, you might say. They all know they're at a dead end. I suppose most of them live around here. Ah, they don't live, miss. Some of them are still breathing, but that's about all. They come in here with butterflies in the stomachs and go out with bats in their brains. Hello! Oh, 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 it's the Duchess. Now, there's a real lady for you. Hello, yes, Duchess. Yes, she is. Here's the woman I pattern my leading character after. Oh, my friend. Parting is such sweet sorrow. Why, where are you going, Duchess? You just got here. <laughs> I'm not myself today, Mike. A double edit. Quick, quick, Knave. My hands tremble as he spots before my eyes. What's that from, Duchess Shakespeare? No, from hitting the bottle. <laughs> Just put it on the bar, Mike, my love. I'll sneak up on it. Come on over here, Margot, Lamont. I, I, I've got someone else I want you to meet. Hello there, Mr. Drake. Oh, hello, Freddy. Gee, who are the tops? Freddy, this is Miss Lane and Mr. Cranston. Very pleased to know you. Come on, Duchess, give us a power. Yes, Duchess, for sight something sad. Yes, Duchess, come on. Oh, will you be quiet, the lot of you? I'm in no mood for the bard tonight. That doesn't surprise me any. What's the matter with the Duchess tonight, Freddy? She doesn't seem her usual jubilant self. Ah, uh, she's still mad about Jenny. Jenny? Well, what did she do? Jenny Green, that's my girl, understand? She's a beauty too, isn't she, Mr. Drake? Oh, yes, she is. Just about my height, nice long yellow hair, big blue eyes and a figure. With all the trimming. That's Jenny. She sounds like... like uh, I do in your play, John. She is, Margot. Ah, there isn't anybody like Jenny, lady. Uh, What does the Duchess have against her, Freddy? Well, yesterday the Duchess was here reciting some of her crackpot poetry when Jenny gets tired of it. Jumps up and puts a coin in the jukebox, which starts up and drowns the Duchess in Tommy Dorsey. The Duchess gets annoyed, see, and nearly cleans up the place with her before I put a stop to it all. Oh, stealing the spotlight from her, eh, Freddy? Ah, uh, you said it, Mr. Drake, and believe me, Jenny's the one that can do it. Will she be in tonight? Yeah, I'm meeting her here. We ain't scared of the Duchess. She can't do just as she likes. What can't I do, Freddy? Treat Jenny the way you did. Just let her show up and I'll... You'll keep your hands off her, understand? Who, who stopped me? I'll show you. Oh, no, you won't. <laughs> Take your hands off me. <laughs> Lamont. Uh, we, we'd better stop them, John. Hey, 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 listen, 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 all of you. It's Ernie. What happened, Ernie? It's Jenny. They just found her dead in her room. Somebody killed her, they say. Killed her? She was murdered? Yeah. There was a glass with poison in it beside her bed and an empty bottle on the table. Well, looks like I wasn't the only one had an argument with your girlfriend. Freddy. Wanted to see me, Commissioner? Yes, Lamont. Oh, good evening, Margot. Good evening. How was that you're reading, Commissioner? Play? Spotlight on Minnie. Oh, it's John's play. Yes, he's a friend of yours, isn't he? Well, yes, I have known him for some time. That's what I thought. I'm working on this murder of Jenny Green. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. We were in the saloon this morning when we heard that the girl had been killed. And I suppose you've both been to this, uh, Jonathan Drake's play? Yeah. You notice how much this Jenny Green is like the girl in the play? The first one to get killed? Why, yes, Commissioner Weston. Lamont and I both mentioned that last night. The papers have made a big story of it. Being a real-life version of the play, I mean. Yes, I know. I've just been talking to John. He says there's been a line at the box office since lunchtime. There are three murders in the play, aren't there? 
This Ginny Green's the first, or whatever Drake calls in the play. Then the little bar lounger gets killed, and finally the other woman, the ex-circus performer. Doc, Commissioner, you don't think there's any connection between the real murder and the play? If there was another murder, Lamont, like in the play, the show would be set for a long run, wouldn't it? You mean, if the other murders in the play actually happened in real life? Oh, Commissioner, that's ridiculous. I mean, instead of drama holding up a mirror to life, we'd find life following the pattern of the play. <laughs> That'd be impossible. Unless the author had a hand in the real-life murders, too. Commissioner, oh, you don't think John Drake would commit murder? Murders? Just to keep his play running? Men have killed for a lot less than that, Margot. Oh, but this is ridiculous, Commissioner. Oh, you don't think there's going to be another murder? You mean the way the little loafer was killed next in the play? I'm not going to take any chances. That's why I sent for you. I believe you're serious. You bet I am. Now, look, when you two were with your author friend, did you meet anybody or see anybody Drake might have patterned this next victim after? Well... Well, of course, darling, Freddy. He's exactly like that awful little man in the play. Do you know where this Freddy lives? No, but you could find out from Mike at the saloon. All right. Want to come along? Because I'm going there. But, Commissioner, what for? Following the play, he's the next on the list to be murdered. I've let one murder slip by, but I'm not going to miss on this Freddy. Well, this must be where Freddy lives. My, what a charming place. Uh, Commissioner, this is a wild goose chase. I've known Drake for years. He couldn't possibly... Be and I've heard that before. Come on, let's go inside. Oh, my goodness. What a dark, dingy, horrible place to live. Yes, isn't it? Let's see now what the saloon keeper wrote down. Oh, these half shadows make everything look so frightening. Freddy's room's on the third door on the left. Look, his door's opening. Yes, yeah, someone's coming out. It's Freddy. It is. You are, Commissioner. I told you, you're all wrong. Uh, your name, Freddy Blake? Hello there, Freddy. You remember me? Yes. I remember you. Uh -huh. Glad to see you're still all right, Freddy. Still all right. There's something wrong with him, Lamont. What's the matter, Freddy? Are you sick? No. I'm not sick. I'm... I'm dying sick. <laughs> Lamont! Why, Freddy... Yes, Lamont. It's just the way I thought. Jonathan Drake's just killed off his second character. <laughs> Who will be the next victim of the sinister murderer? Keep tuned to this station for the conclusion of tonight's adventure. And now, back to the shadow. It is next morning, and we find Lamont Cranston and Margot Lane with Commissioner Weston in the dingy atmosphere of Mike's saloon. I don't know what you're going to prove Lamont dragged me into the saloon. Humor him, Commissioner, humor him. After all, we did go to Freddy's with you. Yes, and you saw what happened, Margot. It's an open and shut case now that your author friend's disappeared. I tell you, John Drake's not the kind of chap who would kill or run away even if he thought he was under suspicion. He's gone. Now, look here, Commissioner. I'll admit Jenny was killed and Freddy right after her. Just like the murders in the play, but I... But did... there were three. Exactly, and who's the third? A character Drake thought of. A hard-boiled ex-circus performer. There isn't a character in this saloon who even remotely resembles her. Oh, that's true, Commissioner. So your theory is knocked very neatly right smack into a cocked hat. <laughs> the one you promised to eat, darling, if Jonathan's plot was true. Ta-da! Oh, there's the boxes. Let's go over to the bar, Lamont. Well, sit down, darling. We've got box seats right at this table. Come over to the bar, boys. Today, drinks are on me. Mike of the best. 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 M
I've only got three months. Blanche! Hey, look! It's Blanche the door! How are you, Blanche? How are you? How are you? Back again? Out of jail, eh? And join me, everyone. Here, wait a minute. This is my party. What's the matter, Duchess? You're slipping. Have to buy drinks to get a little attention around here. You keep quiet, you rotten little shoplifter. Calm down, Duchess. Aren't you going to buy me a drink, too? No, I'm going to give you mine right in the face. Hey, 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 what's going on? Keep out of this, Margo. Let you see all the fun. She threw a drink in my face. Yes, and here's something to go with it. Oh, you bird! I'll kill her, the cheap circus tramp. Circus? I've got bigger villains with a circus than you ever got in the theater. The circus? Yes. Oh. Yes, hanging by her teeth on the top of the tent till her husband knocked them all out. Oh. Lamont, there she is, Lamont. There's the circus performer. Yeah, one of the best in the game. The ex-circus performer, the third oh. victim. Let's it, Cranston. That completes the picture. <laughs> Darling, I'm so proud of you. You certainly are a wonderful detective. All right. The way you showed Commissioner Weston there was no real character, no ex-circus performer like the girl in the play. Margo, I have a feeling that Blanche de Tour could tell us a great deal. But Commissioner Weston has her place completely surrounded, Lamont. No one can get in to see her now. I think I can slip through the police court, Margo. And I think I'd better pay her a visit as the shadow before someone else does. Lutter. Who's that? The voice of the shadow, Blanche. I thought you might be lonely. Gosh, I didn't know my nerves were shot that bad. What's the matter, Blanche? You're frightened, aren't you? I can hear you, but I can't see anybody. The shadow is everywhere and nowhere. Oh, a vaudeville act, eh? Well, I've seen better stunts than yours in sideshows. You can't scare me. I'm too late for that, eh, Blanche? You're already frightened. More than anyone knows. Yeah? There have been murders, Blanche. Your friends, Jenny Green and Freddy. You're marked to die next, Blanche Latour, and you know it. How do you know? The play written by Jonathan Drake. You knew Drake, didn't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He talked to me often. He told you about his play, didn't he? About three murders. How did I know it was really going to happen? I was in jail. I didn't know about Jenny and Freddy. Until tonight. You know you're next. Can you help me? Is that why you came? I'll help you, Blanche, if you'll help me to find the murderer. All right. Oh, wait till I have a little drink. I'll unwrap it. Uh, just a little drink, a little nightcap. All right, Blanche. Tell me. Tell me the name of the murderer. Yeah. You help me, I'll help you. What have I got to lose? Tell me the name. Sure. The murderer's name... The, 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 the mur- murderer's name... Oh... oh. Lunch. Character number three has made an exit. Well, Lamont and Margot, <clears throat> I imagine you'll have to admit I'm right now. Is that why you sent for us? Oh, really, Lamont, you can't blame him for gloating. Have you found Drake yet? That, Mr. Cranston, is just a matter of time. I still say you haven't any direct evidence. No? Wait till you see this. It's onion skin paper. Isn't that the kind used for manuscript copies? Yes, and a special kind Jonathan Drake always bought at the station as near his flat. I checked. Where did you find that? It was wrapped around a whiskey bottle that contained poison liquor. The liquor that killed Blanche Latour. Well, Lamont, I guess the jig's up for poor Jonathan Drake. I could just find him. But the murders all follow those in the play, exactly. Oh, forget the play for a minute, Margot. Think of the real people for a change. What one person hated all three of the murder victims? Jenny, Freddy, and Blanche. Why, the Duchess. 
She fought with all three. Exactly. Lamont, you think she did it, after all? I don't know, Margot. But from what Blanche said, I think she knows a lot more than she's telling us. You think she might know where Jonathan Drake is? I can't say yet, Margot. But I'm sure she's mixed up in this some way. I think it's time the Shadow played a scene with the Duchess. Put that bottle. Ah, here you are. Oh, I'm thirsty in a second little drink. That which has made them drunk hath made me bold. Ah, there's nothing like Macbeth. I laid their daggers ready. He could not miss them. Had he not resembled my father as he slept, I had done it. I have done the deed. Didst thou not hear a noise? Hey? Who's there? Not your husband, Macbeth, my duchess. It is the voice of the shadow. Oh. Oh. Go, go away, please. I'll never touch another drop. Who killed the girl, Jenny and Freddy? And Blanche the Tour. I don't know. Let them rest in peace. They're better off. They're all better off dead than, than alive. Did you kill them, Duchess? No. Find him. Find the man who wrote that play. Find him, and you'll find the murderer. Do you know where he disappeared to, Duchess? Tell me. Tell me where he is, and the shadow will let you alone. Yes. Yes. I know. Where is he? Search the place where the murder's been plotted. At the saloon? Yes. That's the place. That's where the murderer's been all along. Hello. Hello. Listen, Margot. Lamont. I'm in a phone booth right across the street from the saloon. It's just on closing time. I want you to get Commissioner Weston and bring him down here to meet me in exactly half an hour. What's happened, Lamont? Don't be surprised when you see me. I've got under disguise. I'm even changing my voice so nobody will know me. Well, what do you want Weston for? I want him in half an hour to pick up our murderer. Well, what are you going there for? To get Jonathan Drake. Uh, give me another drink, Renner. Just, just one more. All right. Just one more. But it's time I was closing up. It's funny, you know. This place used to be filled around about this time. But it cleans out early since we've been having all that trouble. Trouble? What, 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 what trouble? Haven't you heard? These murders. Poor devils. One after the other, those poor fools have been getting killed. They're better off then. Better off then. All, all of them. You feel like that too? You're a stranger around here, aren't you? Got any place to stay? Got people here? Me? Hmm. <laughs> No, not me. Been traveling around, looking, searching. I, I don't know what for. Always end up drinking. Just passing the time, I suppose, until... Till... Till you hear the call. Yes. Yes, I, I suppose that's it. Yes. Most of the poor devils are better off dead. Trouble is, we don't have the nerve. To do it yourselves. Yes, I. If only somebody had sense enough to do it for us. He'd be kind of a blessing, eh? Yeah. Yes, he'd be kind of a blessing. Well, I'd have it again. Wait a minute. Here's a little present from me. Hmm? Uh, what is it? Whiskey? Yes. Just a little bottle for a nightcap. Uh, uh, thanks. Uh, what What are you unwrapping it for? Well, you have to have a little farewell drink with me. Right here at the bar. I'll fill your glass. No, not for me. Go on, Mike, drink it. You aren't a tramp. I know you are. Here, give me that bottle. Ah, uh, no, Mike. That's the evidence that will convict you. Give me that bottle. Look out. Give me Give me a bottle. Look out for that bottle. Too late. All right, Mike. I've got you covered. 
I, I didn't do anything, Commissioner. We got Jonathan Drake uh, locked up somewhere in this building. Yes, yes, that's right, Commissioner. Oh, I've been holding him for you. He killed him. Jenny, Fanny, and Bodge. No, Mike, you poisoned him. Just like you tried to poison me when you found out that I was onto your little game. Uh, you poisoned him the way they were poisoned in the play and tried to pin the blame on the author. But why, Lamont? To get even with Jonathan Drake for what Mike thought was making fun of him, this place and his cronies. Make himself a commissioner. Make himself a lot before he dies. Lamont, he's mad. Why didn't you kill Drake, Mike, if you hated him so much instead of killing Jenny and your other friends? Dying for them was merciful. Like the rest I put out of the misery. A kind of blessing. They're all better off dead. Only they didn't have the courage to do it themselves. Him? He's different. A smart aleck. I want to see him suffer. I did do it. You've got no evidence. No proof. The bottle's broken, Lamont. Yes, Commissioner. But Mike forgot. There's a little drink I poured out for him. A nightcap, you might call it. Still standing there right on the bar where he left it. That nightcap is going to send him to the scaffold. Well, it's nice of you to drive me home, Jonathan. Oh, all that excitement last night. I don't know what on earth happened to Lamont. He was going to pick me up. Oh, probably afraid he'd run into me, Margot. Huh? But you, why? You know our little bet. <laughs> and you did prove your play could happen to people in real life. <laughs> Can you picture Mr. Lamont Cranston eating his hat on our Beerus thoroughfare today at high noon? <laughs> What's that mob of people doing over there across the street? Oh, perhaps it's an accident or something. <laughs> oh, there certainly is a crowd. John, look. It's Lamont. And he's me. Really... He is actually. And it's exactly high noon. So concludes tonight's adventure of The Shadow.